work on this land. As settlers on this land, we seek to build awareness and active solidarity with indigenous peoples. Little bit better, uh, Thank you. Um, now I would like to introduce our very first speaker. Please welcome MPP Chris Glover, who would like to share some thoughts with us. Like, uh, and, uh, Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Chris Glover. I'm the member of provincial parliament for Spadina Fort York. You are in Spadina Fort York. Welcome to my ride. Thank you, sir. So I'm with the New Democratic Party. The New Democratic Party has always been the workers' party. We've always stood up for workers' rights. And one of the things that happened over the past year, there was a tribunal hearing. The tribunal found that gig workers were misclassified as contractors when they were actually employees entitled protections under the Employment Standards Act. So you know what the government did? They passed Bill 28 to create a subclass of workers called gig workers, and they stripped you of your rights and protections under the Employment Standards Act. Shame, shame, shame. So, with the New Democratic Party, we are pushing to repeal that bill. We need to repeal that bill so that you have your rights uh, put back as employees so that you are entitled to minimum wage, at least minimum wage, for all of the work and all the hours that you're working. There was a report, there was a report that came out this, this week from the Toronto Star. And it's reported in the Toronto Star. It said that you're making $6.37 an hour, which is less than a third of minimum wage, and it's not a living wage. Every, every one of you and every worker in this province deserves a living wage. So we are going to stand with you. I am here to stand in solidarity with you and for your demand for fair treatment at the provincial level. And we are going to fight with you at Queen's Park when the house gets back next week. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like they misled us, all of us. Thank you very much. I would like to introduce now, we just have a few speakers. I would like to introduce uh, a man who has been organizing. <laughs> this man has been organizing Uber Black Drivers for years. He organized the Toronto Uber Drivers for a union fund. And unfortunately, things didn't work out. Um, but I would like to introduce Jeff Butt, who is also with uh, the IAATW, which is an organization of international corporations bringing together numerous uh, gig worker organizations across the globe. Um, he jazz butt. Yeah. 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 Such a diverse. I am actually. I think like many, many, many people who are doing no work. They have no idea what they are doing. And by getting paid like $3 for $40, they are hard work. They think they are still doing $3. They have calculated like, I have a feeling they think that $3 is more than nothing. I'll take this all. They don't understand that by working any other place, they will make at least 60, 55 per hour. So it means they already start at minus 12, 55, whatever. Roughly, and uh, thirty fifty. And uh, on top of it, they have expenses of their car because their car is a direct expense. You cannot just uh, do Uber without car. So whatever they say, like, oh, this is your choice. Like, no, how can you? You cannot make it home in the world without drill. And they pretend that uh, you know, like, oh, this is your choice to have. Car. This is my fourth car. And I don't know what is my future. I think it's very dishonest because they, they don't, they're not responsible. They're not responsible. I'm not asking them to be responsible. Asking to be fair. To be honest. It is dishonest. And I understand this more. Like that. I got a car. After, in, 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 we have a right to use app 
2000. Continuously or with breaks. 12 hour shift. So if we app on 12 hour shift and they give it to us only 3 hours business, what is about the 9 hours? So we want is at the rate of minimum wage which is selected by the Ontario government on that I, at 9 hours is called waiting time. So at the rate of 9 hours into 16 is equal to our demand. The third point is that they kick out driver without any concern and with small complaint. They never ask what is the grievance happened between you and customer. They have to contact with customer and then decided to deactivate the accounts. We need fairness in deactivation accounts. The last point which I have, data with full transparency to share with us that we will get, they show us only that which we getting from customer. They never showing which they are actually charging. The proof is that New York, they are already paying $328 million because they hiddenly charge extra money. So they are charging everywhere. That is why this is our demand. Data share with full transparency. Then everything will be happened. And last two things, which is with city council. City Council put cap in October due to <coughs> give, give it to the Torontonian a safe, a clean a environment due to congestion, due to too much accident, including environmental protection. Folk is every day now. So we need that cap reinstate again. Every extra hour, XL driver, everyone are agree that we must want that cap back for the future clean environment for the Trentonian. The last one, last one about we are we know that sooner Ontario government looking for gig workers a new legislation. BC government already done without concern with the community of the workers and when they announced last two weeks ago BC in Vancouver and other cities they go for strike because that lollipops are favor of companies not for the driver. We want here Ontario government we telling them without our concern if they will do like that we not shut down only Canada, we will shut down 21 countries. This is my last word. So everybody must go together. We are here to fight for our right and we will get the freedom of association. We will get the collective bargaining soon. Yes. Thank you, Ijaz. Um, I, I would also like to introduce Breeze. Breeze is going to wing it. <laughs> Breeze Sofer, the Vice President of Gig Workers United. I might have to go uh, for something to uh, interview, but uh, I'll be happy to talk. Um, oh, wow, that's loud. Um, you know, I think we all know why we're here today. Um, I, I think, you know, I can just think about my own experiences. Uh, I went out on Monday to work. I did a long shift. Uh, I do uh, delivery of food by my bike. And I worked for two hours. And I made 20 bucks. And uh, <laughs> that's just not a livable wage. Um, you know, and... and <laughs> I, I don't know how, how much how much do you guys make? Are you guys able to live? Is everyone here able to live from what you're making? Are you are you able are you able to pay your bills? Are you able to pay your rent? Are you able to pay your groceries? Are you able to live a life? Do you feel like you're living a life of dignity? Do you feel no, you don't. And I think that's why we're all here is because it's becoming increasingly impossible to live the lives 
uh, you know, that we want to live, the, to live, to be able to live with even modest comfort. Uh, and, and that's what all brings us together today. We, 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 we deserve that. Everyone deserves that. Everyone who works a full hour, a full uh, time job should be able to make enough to live. That's, that's it. And you all work hard. Do you think the, the, the CEO of Uber works harder than all of you? No. No, no they, 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 they don't. And we, that you guys are the ones who make them all the money. They've reported record profits and they're paying you less and less and less. Thank you very much. Hello. Okay. All right. You know what? We're going to make it quick, but we just have a few more people um, that are going to say something. Anyways, my name is Erla Phillips. I'm the vice president of the Rideshare Drivers Association. Uh, together with uh, George Wedge, um, you know, we are trying to organize drivers and fight for a basic rights, fair pay, full transparency. We don't know what the customer pays, so we have no idea how much Uber is taking. We do know, however, in many cases that the customer will say, oh, I paid 50 bucks, but Uber will tell us the fare was $40, so they took a cut right off the top. How does that make you feel? Criminal. Okay, and then guess what? On that fare that they tell us was $40, they take their 25 or 30% from the black car drivers. They get a huge chunk taken, bigger than Uber acts. Organized $45, $50. Okay, you're hearing the stories. And then, of course, we have city fees, we have airport fees, we have HST, we have numerous fees that are taken away from us. And we end up with a pittance, and everybody thinks we're making bank. But people will say, oh, if you don't like it, just get a real job. Guess what? You know what? Gig work is real work. Okay? We take pride in what we do. And we deserve the dignity of being treated like real workers. We deserve the dignity of having our rights as workers that are being stolen from us by these companies. Anyways, that's why we're here. We're here for fair pay. We're here for full transparency. We're here to end the unfair deactivations. The unfair deactivations that there is no investigation, there is no transparency in the process, um, there is no real advocacy for those deactivated drivers. These companies are playing with workers' lives, workers who are living in the most expensive city in Ontario. And finally, we are regulated workers. We are regulated by the City of Toronto. The current system is not built and in fact endorses wage theft, unfair treatment, below minimum wage, and it's not okay. Finally, you know what, I just want to say that the, uh, the association supports the efforts that City Council is trying to make in regulating this industry by studying this industry and hopefully uh, coming to a solution where we who are being forced to transition a multi-billion dollar fleet into full EV on less than minimum wage, I'm hoping that, you know, that they will come to a solution where we can afford to do that for the city. Anyways, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. <laughs> um, we only have two more people and I want to introduce our president. My partner in raising voices, George Wedge. Yay, George. Thank you, George. So this is this is the event that you're witnessing today. It's not a local event. We heard a global call of action that came in on social media and we heard that four weeks ago. So in four weeks we decided this is there's global momentum for gig workers and rideshare drivers to stand up and tell these multi-billion dollar American primarily corporations that the game they're playing is just not fair. We took advantage, worked closely with partners in social media, 
we had a reach of about 30,000 of the 120,000 drivers and gig workers that we have access to. We put this event together today, and what you see before you is not the extent of what this action is. We've got, I don't know how many, they keep sending us screenshots of drivers all over the city area who are refusing to go on the app today to provide services for Torontonians. Now, we don't, we don't want Torontonians to miss out. We want them to get their rides, and I can promise you there are enough drivers out there today that no Torontonian will have to wait a very long time to get a ride. So we, we, we want public support. We're not out to upset anyone, but we have to change what this playing field looks like. It's nowhere near level. It's crazy when you think about there's 120,000 Uber drivers in the province of Ontario, and we have never seen our boss. We have no idea what he looks like. No one from the company has ever come to visit us or, or send us an invitation to any office meeting. Every worker in Ontario knows who their boss is. They see them on a daily basis. They have conversations with them. They work to make the workplace better, to make the employees happy. That's not the relationship we have. We invited Uber to come today because all of these drivers that are here today, all of these gig workers that are here today, they just want to be heard. They want to hold up a hand and be able to have the company say, we see you, we understand, let's talk. But that's not what we get. $6.30 an hour is what we get instead. It's not exactly fair. Not exactly. Uh, Uber is great with sound bites. A driver makes $33 per engaged hour. What's an engaged hour? How many hours does it take to get that one engaged hour? How do I get paid for those other hours? Rest of the hours, yes. So Uber put some other stuff out. Uh, the city, uh, working very diligently, understanding that citizens are hurting, they're in financial straits. Every Uber driver that's out on the street today in Toronto is a potential subsidized housing issue down the road. <laughs> that's right. So they recognize the plight of the workers. They're working diligently. They're trying to see through all of the gray and the opaque and understand what the industry is. So the city makes some statements based on data that they see and Uber throws out a couple more sound bites. Oh, our drivers don't clutter up the city. There's only 7% of drivers on the road at any given time. 13% in the peak periods. But given what we see Uber do, they pick and choose words. So when we say, hey, it's really cold today, but they say, oh, it's a full moon. It's nothing to do with the weather. It's nothing to do with the situation. So when they say it's 7% on the road at one time, maybe what they're actually trying to say is that any given hour, 7% of the drivers are actually making that $33. Maybe that's what they mean. Or maybe what they mean is 7% of the drivers are engaged in that hour. The rest are just sitting on the side of the road. And then when they talk about the 13%, maybe it's 13% of the 7% that are actually making the $33. We never know what they're saying because they don't show any data. They throw out a sound bite here and there and that's it. That's their marketing campaign. That's their public relations plan. That's how they capture the hearts and minds of the public. Well, we're here today to say, don't fall for the psychological babble. We're the real story. We are the citizens who provide critical services for our Torontonians and businesses in Toronto. We're the ones that get you and your teens and your children safely from point A to point B, when you want, how you want. We're the ones that go into businesses and bring those, those items from the points of sale to the tables and homes and to the businesses who need those goods. We're essential services. Stop treating us like second-class citizens. Please. Yes. 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 Provincial government has a wonderful vehicle for employment rights in Ontario. It's called the Employment Standards Act. 
They just left at least 120,000 people out of it. I don't know why that is. They don't need something that's separate. The ESA is not broken. It's got all that's of right. the rights one would expect as a worker living in the province of Ontario. Just put us in it. Yeah. We don't need something that's separate and special just for us. The ESA is not broken. All of the rights that these drivers and gig workers want is in the ESA. The ability to organize, the ability to talk to an employer, the ability to negotiate a fair wage, and a floor. There's an actual floor there. It's called the minimum wage. Right now, we're not on the floor. We're not even in the underground parking. We're somewhere else. It needs to change. I want to say thank you to the press because the press has been very kind to us on this issue. They recognize that this is serious. It affects a, 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 an, enormous, a, an enormous percentage of Ontarians. So we want to thank the press for being kind to us and helping us get the word out to the public. Yes, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. I have very important information uh, for press. 25% of world workers' populations are the part of gig worker now. 75% are have all rights, but these 25% have a zero rights. But sooner, now ILO, International Labour Organization, recognized us, maybe this year, within one and a half year, they are arranging a big conference only particular for the gig workers and then new article will be come out and we hopeful Canada accept that, ratify that and will, then we will get more our rights after that article come out. Agencies at United Nations, evolving United Nations, agencies at United Nations for every humility in relation to our lives from every country as much possible. That's the only way we will be making moving forward. I would love to address the issue of a stress of non-unionized workers who work in hospitality sector. I was given information by the police officer that says minimum wage worker never get a compensation for the stress. That's the second one in, in a way as we peacefully marching. Again, I thank you everybody. Um, and I would like to introduce um, JJ Fuser from Ride Fair TO. Um, Ride Fair and the Rideshare Drivers Association uh, collaborated on a report called Legislated Poverty. We dropped it at a press conference on Monday at the legislature. JJ, please welcome. JJ. Thank you so much. JJ. JJ. Oh, good morning. It's so great to see everybody here. We were here in December with five people, and now we're like three or four times that size. That's great. Thank you. Uh, I can yell. That's okay. Um, so, as Earl was saying, um, at Queens Park on Monday, we kicked this conversation off to start telling the truth about what's happening um, in gig work and in Toronto. And uh, it's, it's been so hard, but I, I congratulate all of you that you've managed to get the word out now that things are not okay. And that when the company says you earn $33.35 an, an engaged hour, that means nothing. That means nothing if you don't know how long you're engaged, <laughs> what kind of expenses you have to pay out of that. We started with the company's very own number and used government data to estimate how long are people working, how often are people working, and what kind of expenses are they paying. And after those things are subtracted, that company number, the $33.35, turns into only $6.37 an hour. Can anyone live off that? No. 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 no! And worse, that's a median. It can go down from there, and it does. How many people here have ever lost money from driving? Pretty much everybody. Pretty much everybody. And right now, 
uh, the solutions that the provincial government are, are seeking do nothing to set that floor that George was talking about. Uber saying we should pay people um, 120 percent of engage uh, of the minimum wage for their engaged time. Is that going to help? No. 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 Right. We we so we did the math on that. We found out that sets a floor of two dollars and fifty cents at best. But can you make less than that? Yes. If that were the law of the land, can you lose money while while working? Yes, you can. <laughs> we don't think that our regulators should let anyone make below $16.55 for an hour work. That's the whole idea of the minimum wage, of a minimum floor. Um, as Erla said, there, uh, we're, we're at Nathan Phillips Square, we're at City Hall, and uh, ride hill drivers are city regulated drivers. The city has a role to play. We've experimented for eight years now letting companies dictate the terms of how this industry works. It isn't working for everybody, for anybody, not for drivers, not for transit riders. It's uh, not for our congestion goals, not for our emission goals. It's time for the city to take back oversight over this industry to make sure it works in the public interest. And rather than making it almost impossible for people to earn a living because there are way too many drivers on the road, as Brother Ejaz said, to make sure that everybody has a chance at making a living wage. That's what we're hoping to see there, and that's good for the entire community. Uh, so, so excited that um, your stories here are getting heard above the company narratives and uh, keep going. I'm sure we'll be back. Thank you.